We're in the middle of the worst ever act of terrorism directed at the United the States on Mr. The, Soil. The, oh my God, the building fell! The South building just crumbled from the top! Oh my God! There's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, these bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. Devastating. Devastating. In the worst terrorist onslaught ever waged against the United States, knife-wielding hijackers crashed two airliners into the World Trade Center, toppling the Twin Towers. The deadly calamity was witnessed as another plane slammed into the Pentagon, and a fourth crashed outside of Pittsburgh, establishing the death toll could take weeks. The four airliners alone had 266 people on board, and there were no known survivors. As many as 300 firefighters have been lost, at least 32 police officers missing, scores of Port Authority employees missing, potentially thousands of Trade Center occupants dead. The mayor said he has now spoken to the families of some of the fire department brass confirmed dead, and he had this to tell them. Explain to them that they were working very hard and they were working at what they love to do. And uh, I'm sure their efforts will end up having saved other lives. And their families can be very proud of them. Fire Commissioner Tom Von Essen, filled with grief, could barely speak about his lost friends at the press briefings. The mayor will again brief the press and the public in the morning as the recovery effort continues all night. Glenn Schuck, 10-10 wins at the Mayor's Command Center. Winds News Time 301. Getting around town this morning is not going to be difficult. And here with an update on traffic and transit, Jude Tamillo. Chris, taking a look at our Hudson River crossings right now. The jam cams, the outbound upper deck of the George Washington Bridge is open to traffic. The lower deck is closed coming back into New Jersey. As far as going into the city, just emergency vehicles are allowed to use the upper level at this time. Holland, Lincoln Tunnels still closed in both directions. And right now on the Verrazano Bridge, the Brooklyn bound upper deck is closed and so is the Staten Island bound Gothels Bridge to go along with the Bayonne Bridge and the Outer Bridge crossing. Now in New Jersey, the express lanes of East Bound 80 are closed from exit 62 onto the George Washington Bridge. The local lanes are also closed off at 95. And, of course, the eastbound side of Route 4 remains shut down in Englewood along with eastbound 46 in the Fort Lee area. Eastbound Route 3 also closed off at the New Jersey Turnpike. And right now in Queens, south on the Van Wick, a closure from the Grand Central out to the Nassau Expressway. The westbound LIE is closed from the Douglaston Parkway out to the Midtown Tunnel. The Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges along with the Battery Tunnel closed in both directions. And also we have closures at the Queens Midtown Tunnel and Queensboro Bridge coming back into Manhattan. From the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, New Jersey Transit with limited New York City service to go along with the path train service into New Jersey. Metro North and Long Island Railroad saying a normal day for today. Subway south of Canal Street remains shut down. Alternate side parking rules will be suspended. And I'm Jude Tamillo. Shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 303. 1010 Winds reporter Lisa Evers has been assessing the damage and destruction all day for us in Lower Manhattan. She joins us now live. Lisa? Yeah, let me tell you, I'm, I'm over here on the West Side Highway at uh, Chamber Street and West Street, and I'm looking down at where the, the bridge was that once went from Battery Park City into uh, what, what was once the World Trade Towers. And okay, we seem to be having difficulty with the connection uh, with Lisa Evers. We will check back with her throughout the morning, though. Winds News Time 304. U.S. officials have begun piecing together a case linking Osama bin Laden to the attack, aided by an intercept of communications between his supporters and cell phone calls from victims aboard the jetliners before they crashed. Sources say the FBI is preparing to search locations in Broward County in southern Florida, as well as in Daytona Beach in central Florida. Those locations had links to the suspected bin Laden supporter on the jet communique. Mayor Giuliani is vowing the U.S. will hunt down those responsible for these attacks. And the mayor says he witnessed the horror at the World Trade Center. I have no doubt that we're going to find out who's responsible for this and that we're going to make an example out of it. And I believe that uh, ultimately the strength of American democracy will, will prevail. We have to have confidence in ourselves now. And we have to have a sense that uh, our government, a government of democracy and laws, is the future of this world, not this kind of horrible, awful, inhumane uh, way of acting. And I'm sure we'll find out who's responsible for it and make an example out of it. The mayor continues to urge New Yorkers to remain calm and is asking anybody who's downtown to leave the area and move up. Uptown. Winds News Time 305. I'm told we're going to get in contact with 1010 Winds reporter Lisa Evers again. Lisa? Uh, the phone service is really bad in this particular area, but uh, 
Uh, all up and down West Street, there is a massive rescue operation that is still underway. West Street, what we would call the West Side Highway, lined, filled with emergency vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, construction vehicles, and big, big dump trucks that are taking away rubble from the scene of this World Trade Center disaster. And what's happening right now is they're, they're focusing on an area of the of a, coll a collapse subsequent to the main catastrophe. This was the bridge that went from the from Liberty uh, from Battery Park City over to the World Trade Center that collapsed, and they're concerned that there might be some people on the other side or underneath that. So there are a lot of construction cranes that are down here. It looks like about five or six of them, and they're trying to chip away at that, pull away pieces of debris. And in, in order to try and get to the people that they ho hope are underneath. But the uh, workers that I've been talking to, the EM EMTs coming out of here, who've been digging in this rubble, say that it is just an unimaginably gruesome scene, the details of which I'll spare you. But they just said they have never seen anything like it. There are, of course, far more people dead. Um, there were two earlier that came out alive. That gave people a big boost uh, when that happened is what sources told us. But uh, it, it, it's just a full-scale rescue operation that continues. There's no concept of time here. People are just working beyond the limits of human endurance, doing an amazing job trying to uh, get to people who may be alive. And this is going to continue, they say, until every last hope is, uh, is gone, which won't be for quite some time. Lisa Evers, 1010 Winds, reporting live from West Street and Chambers. All right, Lisa, thank you. Winds News Time 307. Over 300 firefighters at this point. 300 New York City firefighters are missing. Mayor Giuliani says two Port Authority cops have been pulled alive from the rubble. That's two Port Authority police officers pulled alive from the rubble. The mayor says a couple of hundred more policemen are missing. Now, there's a hotline number for information on firefighters and EMS personnel. That number is 718-999-2541. The hotline for information on firefighters and EMS personnel, 718-999-2541. Trying to grasp the magnitude of this tragedy, workers at area hospitals, with the help of medical crews from across the country, are making efforts to save whatever lives they possibly can. At the closest trauma center to the World Trade Center, that St. Vincent's Hospital, there's been a slow trickle of patients coming in this evening. Only 327, that's the last official number that was released. The hospital was expecting thousands. Now, among that 327, 57 are police and fire department members who are among the injured. Three people are also dead. Hospital officials are still hoping that people will be brought in on the overnight and tomorrow for treatment. Now, injuries have ranged from crushing to, to severe burns, eye lacerations, and then to both smoke and dust inhalation. Most of those brought in this evening have been cops and firemen. Terry Sheridan, 1010 wins at St. Vincent's Hospital. Of course, those numbers are all very preliminary. We will not know for some time how many people were actually in the World Trade Center. Winds News Time 308. Police say they've gotten calls from people trapped in the rubble of the World Trade Towers. Mayor Giuliani says the number of dead will be in the thousands. All over lower Manhattan, people ran for their lives, many screaming hysterically, while others watched in disbelief as the two burning World Trade Center towers came crumbling down to the ground. Debris settled on everything below Chamber Street. These sanitation workers were among the first people to arrive at the scene. Like so many others, they watched in shock as they witnessed the unthinkable. Well, the people were jumping out of the buildings. It was, it, it was a big hole in the building from the first plane. It was a big gapping, ga gashing hole, and uh, they were just falling out, throwing themselves out. You know, they didn't want to die in, in the flames. People holding hands when they were going to get burnt and just jumped out of the building. You saw people arm in arm jumping arm out. Arm, just holding hands, ate them, and just held hands and just came right down. Every now and then you'd hear a gasp from the people, the people watching this incident, and you knew another body was coming down. When the buildings collapsed, the debris rained down onto the emergency service workers and the people they were treating at the triage centers below, killing dozens, according to several firefighters that we spoke to. Steve Kasten. Baum 1010 wins news. If you are looking for a lost loved one, the NYPD has set up two numbers, and I'm going to give you them twice. First number, 866 856 4167. That's 866 856 4167. The other number is 212 741 4626. That's 212 741 4626. Also, the NYPD asks that all civilian members of the department please report to work as scheduled later today. 
Winds News Time 310. CNN is reporting that up to 800 people are missing after the hijacked jetliner crashed into the Pentagon yesterday. Nevertheless, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld said the Pentagon is functioning, adding it will be business uh, it will be in business later today. Shipments of blood are coming from all across the country into New York City for victims of the World Trade Center attack. The first shipment to air to arrive by air is due overnight at Teterboro Airport. But the city's issued an urgent plea for help donating blood. Let me make this clear. Your blood is desperately needed, just not now. The people at the American Red Cross Blood Center say if you're a negative blood type or O positive, you can show up at West 67th in Amsterdam at 8 a.m., other blood types will be taken later. Volunteer Bonnie Long. We need volunteers of any kind, social workers, construction, uh, clerical skills, anything. We need you desperately. Drivers. You can stop by any time to pick up an application. Bottom of 1010 wins at Amsterdam Avenue and West 67th Street. Winds News Time 311. Once again, let's check in with Jude Tamillo at Shadow Traffic. Chris, on the southbound Major Deacon Expressway, we still have all lanes closed off at 230th Street. The southbound Henry Hudson Parkway remains roped off at the Henry Hudson Parkway Bridge. As for the FDR Drive, we are closed in both directions from the Battery Park underpass out to the UN. And also the West Side Highway is open to traffic in both directions between 14th Street and the George Washington Bridge. The BQE is closed both ways from the Battery Tunnel out to the LIE. And we can see here on the jam can the inbound Gowanus closed off at the Prospect Expressway. As for some of the East River crossings, the Brooklyn, Manhattan, Williamsburg bridges and Battery Tunnel closed in both directions. You may not go back into Manhattan via the Midtown Tunnel or the 59th Street Bridge, both closed off. Same story on the Triborough Bridge back to Manhattan, all lanes closed. The Throckstack and Whitestone bridges are open in both directions. And coming from Nassau County into Queens, do not use the Long Island Expressway. Stay with the Northern or the Southern State Parkways. The westbound LIE is closed from the Douglaston Parkway straight out to the Queens Midtown Tunnel. Hudson River Crossings, George Washington Bridge outbound upper deck is open to traffic. The lower deck is closed off. And of course, only emergency vehicles are allowed to use the inbound upper level. Lower deck is closed. Holland and Lincoln Tunnel still closed in both directions. As we check in with the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, New Jersey Transit has limited New York City service. Limited path service into New Jersey at this time. Metro North and Long Island Railroad saying they will have a normal schedule for today. All subway service will be suspended south of Canal Street. Staten Island Ferry only open to emergency services and will remain closed to the public at least through today. Alternate side parking rules will be suspended for today. Of course, national air traffic remains suspended through at least 12 noon. I'm Jude Tamillo, shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 313. With the attack on the World Trade Center coming during the morning rush, many commuters found themselves stranded when the bridges and tunnels were closed and the subway shut down. People are milling around on the streets of Brooklyn. They can't get into Manhattan because the subway system has been shut down. Everyone has just about given up trying to get to work, but some people who left Manhattan were kicked off the subway on their way home, like Samantha Carfee of Queens, who was in Lower Manhattan, got out and has been stranded at the Rockaway Avenue subway stop in Brooklyn. I was there not when they collapsed. I was on the train, but uh, when the, the planes hit them, and we could feel it in my office. <laughs> I'm on my way it. home. I'm trying to get home. I'm in Queens, and... I can't even get a phone to call and let my parents know I'm okay. That's because people can't use their cell phones to call home, so pay phones have big lines. Mona Rivera, 1010 Winds in Brooklyn. Winds News Time 314. It's been a difficult time for everyone. In an emotional news conference, here's New York City Fire Commissioner Tom Von Essen speaking last night. We lost people that have given uh, over 40 years. Commissioner Feehan has had every job in the department. I believe the most valuable people, person in the department. When I got this job, uh, the mayor and Commissioner Safer said, make sure you keep Bill Fee in. I haven't regretted that one day. For information on firefighters and only on firefighters, you can call 718-999-2541. That's for information about firefighters. You can call 718-999-2541. President Bush, who began his day in Florida speaking with school children, ended it at the White House after crisscrossing the country. At various points during the day, the president's location was kept secret as he was flown on Air Force One to Air Force bases in Louisiana and Nebraska. Tuesday evening from the Oval Office, the president spoke. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings... Fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, 
unyielding anger. You're listening to live coverage on 1010 Winds. We'll have more right after this CNN special report. This is a CNN Radio special report. I'm Lee Guerin. The ruling Taliban in Afghanistan has denied that Osama bin Laden has been responsible for the devastating terrorist attacks in the United States. They said the terrorism was too great for one man to have planned. President Bush is adding new members to the response team and lots of support is coming in. CNN Radio's John King. The Transportation Secretary, the Health and Human Services Secretary, the Director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, they are now directing the government's response. Portable morgue sent up to the streets of New York, a grim sign there. Deployment by the thousands of search and rescue teams, medical personnel around the country. Rescue efforts are moving at a fast pace because there are victims trapped in the debris who are still alive. Some are using their cell phones to make calls for help. Up to 800 are dead in the Pentagon attack, and officials say the death toll in Manhattan could be in the the thousands. This is a CNN Radio special report. Winds News Time 316. Rescue workers continue digging for bodies as the city begins to recover from the attack. Lower Manhattan looks like a war zone with bodies lying in the street and blood and steel beams blocking roadways. A hazy brownish gray cloud hanging over the financial district. 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones spoke to some of the people who made it out of the World Trade Center before the towers collapsed. In the first hour after the explosion and collapse of the Twin Towers, folks like Tom Colden stumbling down the street covered in ash. He was at his desk on the 64th floor of One World Trade Center when the plane hit and the ceiling came down. What was it like up there on your floor? Was it just pandemonium? No, it was a Colden credits two firefighters with helping him and others go down the steps and out to safety. Colden only hopes that his two rescuers manage to rescue themselves. Al Jones, 1010 Winds in Lower Manhattan. Winds News Time 317. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld made a point of saying he was at the Pentagon, the site of one of the attacks. The nation's defense secretary declared the Pentagon will be in business today. With him was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Henry Shelton, who called those responsible for Tuesday's attacks fanatics and says they will be found. I extend my condolences to the entire Department of Defense families, military and civilian, and to the families of all those throughout our nation who lost loved ones. Secretary Rumsfeld was in his office when the aircraft that slammed into the Pentagon hit the opposite side of the building. He had just run there after having heard of the Trade Center attack. Winds News Time 318. CNN producer Rose Arce witnessed the horror of people falling, jumping from the Twin Towers. I'm about a block away and there were several people that were hanging out the windows right below where the plane crashed when suddenly you saw the top of the building start to shake and people began leaping from the windows in the north side of the building. You saw two people at first plummet and then a third one and then the entire top of the building just blew up and splinters of debris are falling on the street where i'm right now there's a thick plume of smoke and you can see crowds of people including emergency service workers and police officers running from the scene screaming and and there's a there's a school nearby where there were kids in the schoolyard that has been emptied out and they're running up the street now too Israeli Foreign Minister Shimon Peres, meantime, said today's uh, the attacks were tantamount to a declaration of war. It was not an attack only upon America, but an attack upon civilization, an attempt to introduce the rules of jungle in our life, not to permit people to fly freely, to walk safely, to be assured at the places they live. Perez said the terrorist acts were attacks against all of humanity. Winds News Time 319. The wife of U.S. Solicitor General Theodore Olson was aboard the jetliner that crashed into the Pentagon and was able to call her husband as the plane was being hijacked. Barbara Olson, a familiar face on the cable news channels and a frequent guest on Larry King Live, was a former congressional investigator and aide. Olson was on America American Airlines Flight 77 that left Dulles International heading for Los Angeles. CNN correspondent Tim O'Brien has more. Olson, uh, Barbara Olson told Ted the following story that uh, all the passengers were herded to the back of the plane, including the flight personnel, including the pilot. And uh, the only weapons she mentioned were knives and cardboard cutters. You would think if there were a machine gun or any other kind of uh, gun that she would have mentioned that. Air traffic across the nation was halted for the first time in history with the FAA saying uh, ordering all outbound flights to be grounded. The FAA says the ban would not be lifted until at least uh, at the earliest today at noon.
You're listening to live coverage of the terrorist attacks against America here on 1010 Winds, WINS, New York. Oh, my God, the building fell. The South building just crumbled from the top. Oh, my God. I can't imagine anything worse than this. Is that the second building of the World Trade Center going Yes, that is the second tower. That is the second tower. That is the second tower. It's a huge pool of smoke that came out of the middle of the building, and then the building just disappeared into the smoke. That's how the events played out yesterday on 1010 Winds. Just to recap, Mayor Giuliani says thousands of people are still missing in the World Trade Center and says a couple of hundred firefighters and police officers are listed as missing. He says thousands of people who worked in the Twin Towers also listed as missing. The mayor stopped short of saying the people are feared dead. The mayor witnessed the collapse of one of the towers of the World Trade Center at one point, says he found himself in danger. I was in midtown Manhattan and I rushed down and saw a good deal of it with my own eyes. Uh, saw the, the damage that was done to the World Trade Center. Saw people jumping from the top of the building. And then we were in 75 Barclay Street where we set up a temporary command post. And, and then we were hit by the debris from the collapse of uh, the Trade Center and were trapped in the building for, uh, for a short while. Then had to evacuate. The mayor urging New Yorkers not to act on any feelings of anger and is vowing that those responsible will be tracked down and brought to justice. Winds News Time 321, and here's Jude Tamillo with a look at traffic and transit. All right, Chris, as we check the Hudson River crossings for you here on the Jam Cam, the outbound upper deck of the George Washington Bridge is open to traffic. Only emergency vehicles allowed on the inbound upper level. Holland Lincoln Tunnel still closed in both directions. As we uh, take a look at the uh, Cobbles Bridge, the Bayonne Bridge, the Outer Bridge crossing still all closed into Staten Island. The Brooklyn-bound upper deck of the Verrazano Bridge is closed off, and we also have closures of northbound 440 in the uh, Perth Amboy area. Also, a lot of the roadways heading into the uh, Hudson River shut down, such as eastbound Route 4 in Englewood, eastbound 46 in Fort Lee. You've got eastbound Route 3 shut down at the Jersey Turnpike. No access from southbound 17 to Route 3. As we check on the west side highway that's open both ways between 14th Street and the George Washington Bridge, we have the FDR Drive closed both ways between the Battery Park underpass and the UN. Gowanus Expressway closed inbound to the Prospect Expressway. In Queens, the southbound Van Wick shut down from the Grand Central out to the Nassau Express Way. The westbound LIE shut down out of Nassau, straight out to the Queens Midtown Tunnel. As we check the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, New Jersey Transit has limited New York City service. There is limited path service into New Jersey at this time. Metro North and Long Island Railroad saying a normal day for today. Subway service south of Canal Street remains shut down. Staten Island Ferry service only open to emergency services and will remain closed to the public at least through today. Alternate side parking rules are suspended for today. And of course, national air traffic remains suspended till at least 12 noon. And due to mellow shadow traffic on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 323. 1010 Winds reporter John Montone experienced the same frightening moments as thousands of other New Yorkers. He was dangerously close to the World Trade Center during the attack. Stu Morell of Glenrock was late for a meeting at the World Trade Center and so he is alive. I was turned away by a doorman near the World Trade Center minutes before the first tower collapsed. A police helicopter circled that tower as people waved out the windows. Then came the great collapse. The people inside gone. The helicopter gone. Up on Broadway, there was a stampede. Hundreds of us ran from the volcano of bricks and thick blinding soot. We went into a building where the dust was so thick and the hall was so crowded, it seemed only a matter of minutes before we would all die. We didn't. Someone found the door and we got out. Out into what looked like nuclear winter. Three to four inches of soot with people gasping for air, crying, walking around in shock. John Montone, 1010 Winds News. Winds News Time 324. President Bush asked the nation to find comfort in Scripture as he mourned the deaths of thousands of Americans, saying, Today our nation saw evil. In his first primetime Oval Office address, Bush said the United States would find and punish those behind these evil acts and do the same to any country that harbors them. Victor Levine, a political science professor at Washington University in St. Louis, is also an expert on suspected terror mastermind Osama bin Laden, who is the key suspect at this point in time. He says while we don't know who carried out the terror attacks, the overall plan has the hallmark of bin Laden. He also says the U.S. must be very careful in how it retaliates. You don't retaliate until you have an address. This one doesn't have an address yet. We're not quite sure, you know, who who was involved, uh, what was involved, how many were involved. 
Um, we're not even sure that it was Osama bin Laden, although he's the most likely suspect. Levine says a government like Iraq would have had no problem finding willing pilots to carry out such attacks. He says bin Laden has the money to finance such an attack and says bin Laden inherited hundreds of millions of dollars from his Saudi father and has access to that money since he's been sheltered by Afghanistan. The United States says bin Laden was behind the 1993 attack on the World Trade Center as well as the 1998 bombings of the U.S. embassies in Africa as well as last year's bombing of the USS Cole. Winds News Time 325. There will be no school for children in New York City today. New York City schools will not reopen until at least Thursday to give principals and staff members time to develop grief counseling and crisis intervention teams. Kids who lost someone in the tragedy or were traumatized will have a chance to talk about it with trained counselors when they come back. Tevin Taylor, a nine-year-old whose school in Brooklyn is not far from the Twin Towers, saw smoke filling his classroom, waited four hours for his mom to come and get him. And was he glad to see her? When I saw her, I cheered, and then I went to um, my mother, I hugged her, <laughs> and then I hugged her, and you hugged him. Oh yeah, I gave him a big hug and kiss, squeezed his ears like I normally do. <laughs> So it was a good really it was a relief. Now with a day off, schools are urging parents to talk with their kids about this tragedy. Mona Rivera, ten ten, Winds News. Winds News time three twenty six. Ten ten Winds reporter Sandy Klein has been out with rescue workers uh, in New Jersey. The Jersey City Medical Center is a level two trauma center and of course was called upon in the aftermath of the tragedy at the World Trade Center to take care of some of the wounded. One hundred forty three people were seen, twenty one of them admitted all came by ferry across the Hudson and then were taken by ambulance to the facility where the auditorium became the minor injury treatment room and the library was turned into kind of a center for the less wounded who could talk and meet with counselors and the director of social work and case management said that some New York City cops and firefighters who weren't physically injured but were clearly traumatized have been receiving counseling. The facility went on code one alert and that's for external disasters. At one point during the day 20 ambulances from around the area went back into New York City to try and bring patients or the wounded back across the Hudson, but they were not able to get close to the site of the tragedy. Sandy Klein, 1010 Winds News at the Jersey City Medical Center. Winds News time 327. 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones spoke to some of the people who managed to make it out of the World Trade Center before the place collapsed. The world's largest office complex now reduced to a pile of rubble, changing lives forever. Eugene Foti was at work inside One World Trade Center and says he ran for his life. Now, he's mad. To me, I'm like, if I'm George Bush, all out war. I mean, I know these, these guys, are, you know, this is a holy war. They're, they're not afraid to die, but, you know, you got to you gotta put these guys out of the misery. One way or another, this is incredible. You can't, you can't stand for this in the United States. And while some share Fody's anger, many are just in a state of shock, scared that what was once unthinkable happened twice. Al Jones, 1010 wins in lower Manhattan. Winds News Time 328. If you've got information about the terrorist attacks, you're urged to contact the FBI via a website. The site is www.ifccfbi.gov. That website, once again, www.ifccfbi.gov. You can also call them 1-866-483-5137. 1-888-483-5137. A partial list of New York City closings for today in response to the attack. Normal service expected on the Long Island Railroad, as we've been hearing from shadow traffic. Normal service also expected on the Metro North Railroad. The Metropolitan Museum of Art will be closed to visitors and staff. All facilities of the New York Public Library will be closed. Classes canceled uh, across the city. All offices will be closed except for essential staff. The New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ Stock Market, and the American Stock Exchange will all be closed today. State courts and federal courts will all be closed. All Manhattan and courts and court offices will be closed. Court and court offices and other boroughs will be closed except for emergency services. Employees should stay home unless contacted. Jurors should not report for duty in New York City today. New York City public and parochial schools will be closed. The Empire State Building will be closed. All business below 14th Street in Manhattan will be closed, including on Wall Street. 
Winds News Time 329. We're now a few hours after the attack in the World Trade Center, and ferries and private boats continue to disgorge, walking wounded and evacuees who somehow managed to escape injury onto the shores of Jersey City across the river. Center's been set up there, as well as other centers throughout the city. You're listening to coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attack on American soil here on 1010 Winds, WINS New York, an Infinity Broadcasting Station. More after this special coverage from CNN. This is a CNN Radio Special Report. I'm Maria Boyington. The walking wounded, hundreds of them are still being taken from New York City to New Jersey for medical treatment. Hundreds of police and firefighters who responded to the World Trade Center before the towers collapsed are missing. A third hijacked plane hit the Pentagon, where officials say the number killed could range from 100 to 800. Investigators are working the crash scene of the fourth plane. Pennsylvania state troopers tonight have the crash site secured, treating it for the moment as a crime scene. Yesterday afternoon, the FBI clearly taking charge of the investigation. According to people in the area, the plane was flying at a very low altitude when there was a rush of engine noise. At that time, the plane then turned and plunged at a 45-degree angle, crashing into a field which is part of a strip mining operation near the town here of Shanksville. CNN Radio's David Mattingly. This is a CNN Radio special report. An aircraft carrier and at least a dozen ships with guided missiles have been deployed to secure the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. Navy officials saying the ships are ready to respond to any tasks in support of national defense. Governor Frank Keating is upset by reports of gas price gouging in Oklahoma, where the price of unleaded gasoline is as high as $5 a gallon. Any station that is charging an excessive price for gas is gouging, and there is no reason uh, for that. The price for a gallon of gas fluctuated between 4 and $5 in Indianapolis. In portions of the southeast, long lines were reported at gas stations. The shows won't go on on Broadway and in Los Angeles. The Emmy Awards ceremonies are indefinitely postponed and box offices shut down after the attacks. California and Florida amusement parks also closed their gates. I'm Maria Boynton. This is the CNN Radio Network. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. I can't find anybody from five rescues and seven squads. And it's just uh, it's a devastating thing. I don't, I don't know uh, well the fire department will, will recover, but I don't know. Good morning. I'm Chris Riley. Once again, to recap for you, four commercial flights were hijacked yesterday. Two of the planes crashed into the Twin Towers, causing their eventual collapse. Another plane crashed into the Pentagon in Washington, and the fourth went down about 85 miles outside of Pittsburgh. The rescue and recovery effort really just beginning to get underway. Uh, it was simply too dangerous earlier for crews to go into the area of the tower collapses. So as of now, we really have no idea as to any uh, definitive numbers. Let's get an update now on traffic and transit with Jude DeMillo. Well, Chris, traffic right now is still being kept out of Manhattan at the Hudson and East River crossings. You will not be able to use many of the access roads to them. The George Washington Bridge does have traffic moving on the outbound upper deck. The inbound side is uh, available only to emergency equipment. It looks like the Lincoln and Holland Tunnel stay shut. If you are at the Whitestone and Throgsneck Bridges, they are open between Queens and the Bronx. However, the Triborough Bridge is closed heading down into Manhattan, as are the Midtown Tunnel and the Battery Tunnel, also the bridges from Brooklyn in. Now, traffic coming in through Queens, still being confined to the westbound side of the Grand Central Parkway. I can see with the expanded 1010 Winds Jam Cam Network, nobody going along the westbound LIE at this time. The Belt Parkway West is closed at JFK. Traffic is being diverted onto the service road, and the southbound Van Wick Expressway remains closed from the Grand Central Parkway right down to the Nassau Expressway by JFK Airport. Traffic in New Jersey being kept off eastbound Route 80, approaching uh, where it merges with Route 95. You're detoured onto the local streets in Fort Lee. Route 4, 46, 3, and 1 and 9 remain closed as they approach the Hudson River as well. The New Jersey Transit System has limited New York City service being proposed for today. There's also going to be limited path service to New York. Metro North will be operating on a Saturday uh, schedule for today, but they may be resuming normal service sometime later. The LIRR says they are back to full service. The subway 
roadways south of Canal Street are shut down. The Staten Island Ferry only open to emergency service personnel. Alternate side parking rules will be suspended today. And, of course, national air traffic is suspended till at least noontime. More shadow traffic and transit in 10 minutes on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 334. Mayor Giuliani was hopeful last night that there were survivors within the rubble. The mayor and police commissioner confirmed police had received cell phone calls from people trapped inside the rubble. They also said that two Port Authority police officers were pulled from the debris alive. Earlier, Mayor Giuliani himself almost got trapped in a nearby building. We were using a ground floor area as a temporary command center so that we could be close to where the uh, rescue efforts were taking place. And uh, as we were setting up, we were on the phone talking to the the governor and the White House, and uh, the, the building collapsed, and we had to evacuate through the basement. It was uh, it, it was pretty dicey for a while. And the mayor is urging people not to come into New York City unless it's absolutely necessary. If you have to come into Manhattan because your business is essential, then obviously do it. The upper part of Manhattan will be open. But if tomorrow is a day in which you want to stay home and stay with your family and uh, give comfort and support maybe to other people that have been affected by this, it would, it would be a good day to do that. Lower Manhattan will be closed off to everybody except for essential personnel and residents. The mayor says the city will be open north of 14th Street. Winds News Time 336. 300 members of the New York City Fire Department are missing. Among those lost in the disaster were First Deputy Commissioner William Fian and Peter Ganshi, Chief of Department. New York City Fire Commissioner Thomas Von Essen spoke about his fallen colleagues. Chief Gansey, the same thing. Chief of Department, 33 years, 34 years. Ray Downey, we just honored him with a dinner. Almost 40 years of service. World renowned for situations like this. To find information on missing firefighters, call 718-999-2541. To find information on missing firefighters, call 718-999-2541. Here in New York City, word that public and parochial schools will be closed today. Students are being told to stay home from New York City schools until at least Thursday. But principals, assistant principals, psychologists, and social workers have to report to work to develop a plan for when the kids come back. Schools plan to have grief counselors on hand for any student who needs it and for trauma counseling. Tevin Taylor of PS58 near Court Street in Brooklyn was close enough to the World Trade Center to be affected by this tragedy. So they told me that in Manhattan there was a building that was on fire. And the smoke was going to come into your classrooms. It was filling your classrooms? We were that close, huh? Yeah, the smoke was going to come in our classroom, but we closed the window door. Other kids lost loved ones in this tragedy or know people who were injured. A lot for them to digest, and counselors will be on hand when they come back to school on Thursday. Mona Rivera, 1010, Winds News. Winds News Time 337. President Bush began his day in Florida yesterday speaking with school children and ended it at the White House after having crisscrossed the country, moving locations throughout the day for his own personal safety. Air Force One touched down in Washington about 7 o'clock last night, and shortly afterward, the president went on live television to address the nation. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. And no one will keep that light from shining. The president said terrorists can shake the foundation of our buildings, but they cannot shake the foundation of America. He also said our military is powerful and prepared, that our first priority to get help to the injured and to protect our citizens from further attacks. He says the search is underway for those behind these evil acts in that he'll make no distinction between the terrorists and those who might harbor them. Winds News Time 338. The president's words were reiterated by other federal officials. Here's Attorney General John Ashcroft. These heinous acts of violence are an assault on the security of our nation. They are an assault on the security and the freedom of every American citizen. We will not tolerate such acts. We will expend every effort and devote all the necessary resources to bring the people responsible for these acts, these crimes, to justice. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Henry Shelton. Today we have watched the tragedy of an outrageous act of barbaric terrorism carried out by fanatics against both civilians and military people. Acts that have killed and maimed many innocent and decent citizens of our country. 
Between 100 and 800 people are estimated to be dead in the attack on the Pentagon. Winds News Time 339. While thousands of Palestinians celebrated the attacks, Yasser Arafat has deplored them. Many Palestinians were handing out candy in celebration of what some have called a sweet situation. 1010 Winds reporter Steve Kastenbaum was in Lower Manhattan just moments after the two planes smashed into the Twin Towers. The landscape of New York forever changed at the hands of terrorists. This horrible tragedy has touched anyone and everyone in and around the New York City area. Roy Anderson was among the many people with medical training who rushed to the scene of the disaster after the buildings collapsed. But when he got there, he found that there was not much more that he could do. There's no sign of life. There's no... It's, it's just going to be bodies coming out. If they can even do that. I mean, there's like, uh, looks like a Hollywood set. There's the World Trade Center now consists of just some spires going up about 25 feet, and the rest is rubble. It's like pictures of Europe in the war. His story, one of thousands of similar stories that will no doubt be told over and over again for the weeks to come. When the two buildings collapsed, the debris fell upon those working at the triage centers at the ground level below at the World Trade Center. Many of the rescue workers were killed as they were trying to tend to the injured people who were hurt when the planes originally crashed into the buildings. Steve Kastenbaum, 1010 Winds News. You're listening to live coverage on 1010 winds of the terrorist attack on America. Clearly we're in the middle of the worst ever act of terrorism directed at the United States on domestic soil. Oh my God, the building fell! The South building just crumbled to the top! Oh my God! There's no words to describe what's going on out there. I mean, these bodies just coming a half hour later, still coming out of the goddamn sky. Word there are people alive in the rubble at what is left of the World Trade Center. Good morning, I'm Chris Ridley, and this is continuous live coverage on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attacks that took down the Twin Towers and hit the Pentagon as well. We really have yet to witness the full impact of the tragedy that's most likely killed and injured possibly thousands, but there is word from the mayor and police commissioner there are people alive in the rubble. They say they know this because the police have received telephone calls on cell phones from people who are trapped who've called them on their phones. Winds News Time 341. Let's get an update now on traffic and transit around the city with Rick Forrest. Well, Chris, traffic remains off limits at uh, all the bridges and tunnels leading into Manhattan from New Jersey and the outer boroughs. If you are trying to get out of the city, you can use the George Washington Bridge to New Jersey, but only the upper deck. The inbound side is being reserved for emergency vehicles. Traffic right now on eastbound Route 80 and the New Jersey Turnpike where they merge. Traffic is being forced off to the local streets in Fort Lee. Eastbound Route 4 remains closed in Englewood. Route 46 closed in Fort Lee. Eastbound Route 3 closed at the New Jersey Turnpike. If you're on the New Jersey Turnpike, you cannot get off or onto exit 13 for the uh, Outer Bridge Crossing. Northbound Route 1 and 9 closed at the Pulaski Skyway. The Newark Bay extension of the New Jersey Turnpike that goes to the Holland Tunnel was closed. In the Bronx, the southbound Major Deegan Expressway shut down at 233rd Street. The Henry Hudson Parkway is closed at the Henry Hudson Bridge on the southbound side. And Manhattan's east and west sides affected. The FDR Drive and West Side Highways both closed both directions south of 125th Street. Brooklyn, I can see with the Panasonic Jam Cam, inbound Gowanus Expressway. Everybody off at the Prospect Expressway and both directions the BQE closed right from the Battery Tunnel split to the LIE. The Battery Tunnel itself is closed to Manhattan as are all the Queens crossings as well. The westbound Belt Parkway closed at JFK Airport. Traffic is being forced to the service road. The southbound Van Wick Expressway is closed from the Grand Central Parkway to the Nassau Expressway. New Jersey Transit will have limited New York City service today. Also limited service on PATH trains to New York. Metro North says they'll be on a Saturday schedule both directions, but they may resume normal service sometime today. The LIRR should be on full service, according to them. The subways south of Canal Street are shut down. Staten Island Ferry only open to emergency service personnel. Alternate side parking rules suspended citywide today. National air traffic has been suspended till at least 12 noon. Of more shadow traffic and transit in 10 minutes on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 343. To recap yesterday's events, two hijacked aircraft with passengers on board crashed into the two World Trade Center towers. The first crash happened shortly before 9 o'clock in the morning, and then 18 minutes later, the second one. At 10 o'clock, the South Tower came tumbling down, and at 10.28, the North Tower also came down. And shortly before 5.30 yesterday afternoon, building number 7, that's a 47-story building in the World Trade Center complex, crashed as well because of fire resulting from the earlier explosions. 
1010 Winds reporter Lisa Evers was at the scene of all the destruction in Lower Manhattan. A massive rescue operation was launched to try and find survivors of this disaster. Firefighters, police, and EMTs like Yossi Stern worked long hours through the dusty rubble, painstakingly looking for anyone who might be alive. As I was walking to assist in removing two bodies, I found under just two pieces of metal, we found some arms and legs. He says the impact of what he experienced has not yet set in. I, I think I'm still in shock. I, I don't think I really believe. I'm just working on adrenaline. All concept of time was lost as these heroic rescuers risked danger to their lives in order to have a chance to save another. Lisa Evers, 1010 wins at Chambers and West Street. Winds News Time 344. Although Mayor Giuliani was hopeful there were survivors in the rubble, the mayor did confirm we've lost a number of the city's top fire officials. The mayor is asking people to stay home tomorrow if you don't need to come into the city. He says the city will be open, however, north of 14th Street today, rather. You're listening to live coverage of the terrorist attack on America here on 1010 Winds WINS New York. This is a CNN Radio special report. I'm Lee Guerin. The Navy's Pacific Fleet Tuesday deployed an aircraft carrier and at least a dozen ships with guided missiles to protect the west coast of the United States and Hawaii. A CNN USA Today Gallup poll was taken Tuesday evening on what you are feeling about the horrific terrorist acts on U.S. soil. Michael Jones reports. The vast majority of Americans consider the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon as acts of war. But only 21% are calling for an immediate military strike on terrorist organizations before the U.S. identifies which ones are responsible for Tuesday's events. Most think that those attacks were just the first stage in a sustained terrorist campaign that will continue in the next few weeks. Michael Jones, CNN Radio, Atlanta. Firefighters are still pouring water on what's left of the World Trade Center buildings following their collapse. The death toll in New York may reach into the thousands. Up to 800 may be dead at the Pentagon. This is a CNN Radio special report. Winds News Time 346. New York City public schools will be closed today, as will Catholic schools in the city. However, schools Chancellor Harold Levy is asking principals, guidance counselors, social workers, psychologists, and crisis teams to report to work to prepare plans to respond to the tragedy. Mr. Levy says that work will include coordinating crisis intervention and to arrange for grief counseling and other support services as well. 1010 Winds reporter Carol Dioria spoke with a teacher from a city school who was faced with the task of explaining this to her young students. For an adult, this terrorist attack can leave you speechless and angry. But imagine if you're a child. Sonia Zwemer is a teacher at St. Ignatius Loyola Elementary School on Park Avenue and 84th Street in Manhattan. And she spent her day trying to explain to the children what happened. They were confused. They didn't really understand what was going on. Um, they were sad for, um, and concerned about people who worked in the building. Um, a lot of them have parents, aunts, uncles, um, just friends, family that work in the building. So they were confused and scared and worried. And she looked absolutely drained from the day as she walked off the Brooklyn Bridge. By the way, City Catholic Schools are closed Wednesday. Carol DeOri attends and wins in Brooklyn. Winds News Time 347. President Bush arrived back at the White House around 7 o'clock last night. The president was ushered around to various spots across the country to ensure his safety. The president addressed the nation just after 8.30 last evening and said the images of what happened have filled us with sadness and anger, but that the terrorists have failed because our country is strong. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. The president said terrorists can shake the foundation of our buildings, but they cannot shake the foundation of America. The president says nobody will keep our nation's light from shining. Bush asked for the nation's prayers for those who grieve and quoted Psalm 23. He says none of us will forget this day, but... We go forward to defend our freedom. Winds News Time 348. In a briefing from Washington, other officials also vowed to track down and root out the terrorists who carried out the attacks. General Henry Shelton is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I think this is indeed a reminder of the tragic, the tragedy and the tragic dangers that we face day in and day out, both here at home as well as abroad. I would tell you up front, I have no intentions of discussing today what comes next, but make no mistake about it, your armed forces are ready. He said the full resources of the Department of Justice are being deployed to investigate the attacks and says despite the attack on the Pentagon building, it will be open for business today. The FAA said earlier no planes will fly anywhere in the country 
until at least noon later today. Winds News Time 349. Once again, Mayor Giuliani said he's hopeful there were survivors among the debris. City officials confirmed the police had received cell phone calls from people trapped in the World Trade Center rubble. They also said two police officers had been pulled out alive. But they spoke of fatalities as well. More on that now from 1010 Winds reporter Glenn Shuck. The fire department is mourning the potential loss of some 300 firefighters, including several top brass that maybe have been lost fighting this fire. Among them, Deputy Chief Ray Downey, Deputy Chaplain Father Michael Judge, Chief of Department. Peter Ganchi and First Deputy Commissioner Bill Feehan. Commissioner Thomas Van Essen devastated by this loss. We've got um, over 300 people that are missing that uh, we can't account for. We believe that many of uh, many of them are, um, are, are gone. And Police Commissioner Carrick says the NYPD is searching for 32 of their own lost somewhere in the debris. Glenn Shock 1010 wins at the Mayor's Command Center. Wins news time 350. No school today for New York City school children. New York City schools will be closed for at least one day in the wake of the World Trade Center attack, but not closed for everyone. Principals, assistant principals, psychologists, social workers all have been told to report to work to develop a grief counseling and crisis intervention plan. That's because some kids saw the World Trade Center towers collapse. Others, like nine-year-old Tevin Taylor of PS58 in Court Street in Brooklyn, may have been traumatized. He saw smoke filling his classroom and immediately felt scared. I'm thinking about my mother that if she's okay at work because of the smoke spreading around everywhere because it'll win. You saw the smoke and heard what was going on? Well, I haven't heard what was going on, but the man, the janitor at school, he said to close the windows because the smoke it will come in. This is the kind of memory affecting school kids which may require counseling, so crisis teams will be on hand when schools reopen on Thursday. Mona Rivera, 1010 Winds News. Winds News Time 351. Let's find out now what's going on in terms of traffic in and out of the city at this time. We get a report from Shadow Traffic's Rick Forrest. Oh, Chris, as you might imagine, no traffic being allowed into Manhattan from either the outer boroughs or from New Jersey. If you're heading towards the uh, Lincoln Tunnel, Holland Tunnel, or George Washington Bridge, you'll be diverted off well before you get there. Roads like Routes 4, 80, 95, 3, and so forth. Uh, 1 and 9 also over the Pulaski Skyway, the New Jersey Turnpike, um, Hudson Bay Extension. They are all shut down for the moment. No traffic. Traffic back to New Jersey at the Holland and Lincoln Tunnels. You can get to New Jersey at the George Washington Bridge. In fact, I can see with the expanded 1010 Winds Jam Cam Network, traffic moving fairly smoothly over the uh, Harlem River. And in the background, the George Washington Bridge, everybody diverted to the upper deck. No traffic, though, I see underneath on the Major Deegan Expressway. That is shut down on the southbound side of 233rd Street. The Henry Hudson Parkway is closed at the Henry Hudson Bridge. Once you reach Manhattan, or if you're driving uh, in Manhattan right now, don't head to the far east or west sides. The FDR Drive and West Side Highway both closed down south of 125th Street. In uh, Brooklyn, the inbound Gowanus Expressway remains diverted off the highway at the Prospect Expressway. Both directions of the BQE closed after that, right off the Battery Tunnel split up to the LIE. The Belt Parkway stays closed westbound at JFK Airport. Traffic diverted to the service road. You can't get down to JFK either on the southbound Van Wick. That is closed starting at the Grand Central Parkway. As In addition to the Hudson River crossings being closed, the Triborough Bridge is closed to Manhattan. Throgs Neck and Whitestone Bridges stay open. The Queensboro Bridge Bridge, Midtown Tunnel, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges are closed, as is the Battery Tunnel. And the Staten Island-bound Gothels, Bayonne, and Outer Bridge crossings are also closed down to traffic. At the 1010 Winds Transit Desk, New Jersey Transit, reporting limited New York City service for today, limited path service as well to New York. Metro North says they'll be operating on a Saturday schedule, so check those timetables of yours. They'll resume normal service probably sometime today, however. LIRR says they are on a full service schedule. The subways south of Canal Street are shut down. The Staten Island Ferry is only open to emergency services personnel. Alternate side parking rules are, in, are uh, suspended for today citywide, obviously, and also the national air traffic has been suspended till at least noon. More shadow traffic and transit in 10 minutes on 1010 Winds. Winds News Time 353. Once again, just to recap for you, four commercial flights were hijacked yesterday. Two of the planes crashed into the Twin Towers, causing their eventual collapse. Another plane crashed into the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia, and the fourth went down about 85 miles outside of Pittsburgh. The rescue and recovery efforts really just beginning to get underway. 
Uh, Tuesday, it was simply too dangerous for crews to go into the area of the tower collapses. So as of now, we really have no idea just how many people were killed in what is undoubtedly the worst attack against the United States in the history of our nation. Winds News Time 354. 1010 Winds reporter Juliet Papa was in Lower Manhattan Tuesday morning talking with eyewitnesses. Will Phillips and Anthony Zicardo were right across the street when the first tower toppled. Right there, it fell down like a stack of cards. Half the cards. And, just, so uh, you, and uh, you had gla- glass shattering and it was coming down straight. All this glass was coming down. The top was just literally going right into the, into the ground and stuff was falling it, out. It looked like it was going to fall right on top of you. They ran and managed to get towels from a nearby gym to cover their faces. Others who saw the rubble described it as looking like World War III. Death and destruction everywhere. Juliet Papa, 1010 Winds in Lower Manhattan. And here's 1010 Winds reporter Al Jones. A huge pile of rubble where once was the world's largest office building complex. Eugene Foti was inside the Twin Towers when the first plane struck. He was outside when the first tower fell. As soon as the top dropped, the, the bottom just came with it. And it was just, I mean, my assumption is I didn't hear an explosion on the, from, from the bottom, but I, from seeing the impact of the plane come in, crash into it, it crashed in the middle of the, of the building. And that's what, I'm, I'm assuming it caused structural damage, but to bring down, bring down the rest of the building. But it's just, it's, it's just a fact that I've never come straight out of the movie. And it's also something that Fody and others look at with shock and wonderment. They now look down the street and see nothing. The majestic landmarks now reduced to rubble. Al Jones, 10 10 wins in Lower Manhattan. Winds News Time 355. At various points, the only way you could get out or into the city was by walking over a bridge. 10 10 wins reporter Carol Dioria has more. The weary look on some of the faces of folks as they walk off the Brooklyn Bridge is in itself upsetting to see. The most pained look is on the faces of some of the volunteers. People like Brian Ramos and Ramik Mack. They had been working at a construction site on 14th Street when they just dropped what they were doing when the attack occurred and they started to walk south to help. It's nothing that you do for glory. You do because you feel it in your heart. We must have built at least good, uh, at least I would say two, three hundred stretches. And uh, they're still being made. And uh, those stretches, I don't really think they're going to be for pulling out anyone that's alive. So they actually got pretty close, and it was really upsetting to see the number of dead bodies. It was overwhelming. Carol DeUri, a 10-10 wins at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge in Brooklyn. Winds News Time 356. 10-10 wins reporter Sandy Klein was with some of the rescue workers who helped the injured into New Jersey. Jersey City Medical Center went on code one alert this morning. That's for an external disaster and what a disaster it was. Patients were ferried to this facility. They were taken across the Hudson and then ambulances picked them up on the Jersey City side. The building's auditorium turned into the minor injury treatment room. One of the emergency room doctors who had been treating patients said this is the worst catastrophe she's ever seen. Lynn McFarlane is the director of public affairs for the hospital and she talks about how the facility put it pulled itself together well when we first heard about the disaster we knew that we had to pull all of our personnel together Uh, we put our code one in alert and called in all of our medical staff as well as support staff we're just all working together from our webmaster signing up people coming in to volunteers coming in uh, from the community as well as our regular volunteers most of the patients here were treated for smoke inhalation burns, upper body contusions. 143 people have been seen at this facility. Sandy Klein, 1010 Winds News at the Jersey City Medical Center. New York's two senators, Schumer and Clinton, vowed to help in any way possible. Senator Schumer spoke to President Bush. Senator Clinton vowed that those responsible will be caught. To the families of those who may have losses and so many, so many calls we received today from people who couldn't find loved ones didn't know where they were. We feel your pain. I know for an hour I couldn't find my daughter whose high school is in the shadow of the World Trade Center. There is absolutely no need for anyone anywhere to panic. Uh, This has been carried out in an orderly and effective manner, uh, but we have a lot of work ahead of us, and that work includes Uh, the identifying uh, of those who are responsible for this cowardly and evil act and holding them accountable wherever they might be, however long it would take. Winds News Time 358. And with the city's emergency service personnel stretched stretched to the brink, Governor Pataki called out the National Guard. It's obviously a horrific uh, attack, uh, but the focus has to be on helping those whose lives are at risk, helping to make sure we take every possible security step for those who are looking to to leave the area uh, and to get assistance to those who are still injured. That's the focus at this point. And the 
governor has issued a statement, which I'll read for you now. Quote, we pray for the children who will go to bed this evening without their mothers and fathers, for the mothers and fathers who've lost the children they loved, and for the husbands and wives who will return to empty homes. We pray for the firefighters, police officers, and rescue workers who tragically died while committing extraordinary acts of heroism. Unquote. Wins News Time 359. Now for the investigation. American officials began piecing together a case linking Osama bin Laden to the worst terrorist attacks in U.S. history, aided by an intercept of communications between Osama bin Laden supporters and harrowing cell phone calls from victims aboard the jets before they crashed. Authorities are focusing some of their efforts on possible bin Laden supporters in Florida based on the identification of a hijacker in one of the uh, manifests of the four jets that crashed. The sources said the FBI is preparing to search locations in Broward County in South Florida and Daytona Beach in Central Florida. The locations had links to the suspected uh, bin Laden supporter on the jet communique. You're listening to live coverage here on 1010 Winds of the terrorist attacks against America. Here on 1010 Winds, WINS, New York, an infinity broadcasting station.